Hello everyone, my name is Mal and this is a video training for La Rosa Partners interested in using the Survey123 app in the field. Um, so first, if you don't have the app downloaded, that's the first thing you're going to want to do. And um, I'm currently recording and sharing my smartphone screen and this is an iPhone, but if you have an Android or another type of phone, the process should be relatively similar. So you're going to go into your app store and you're going to type survey one, two, three as one word, no space. It'll show up here, ArcGIS survey one, two, three, and it's this green app uh, with the green logo and um, the white notebook and white check mark. So mine says open, it's because I already have the app downloaded. Uh, your button might say download or add or something like that, and that's how you get the app on your phone. So after you've downloaded the app, you'll see it here on your screen, Survey123, and you also have to download the LPP flow data uh, survey specifically. So the great thing about Survey123 is you can download and, and have many surveys in your app, but um, we're looking for the LPP flow data observations specifically. So um, you can do that through one of the links we've sent you via email. Um, you can also do it by QR code. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You would open up Survey123. It's going to take you to this page, this general page that prompts you to sign in. And the great thing about um, this is that you do not actually need an account. You can still fill out and submit surveys if you don't have a Survey123 account. So you're going to see at the bottom, continue without signing in. You're going to click there. And it will lead you to your My Survey123 page. So if you just newly downloaded this app, you won't have the surveys that I have here. It'll just be blank, but you can see um, in the search bar to the right, there's this little tiny QR code that you can click on and it will pull up your camera. So um, you can find the QR code. Uh, we've either emailed it to you. It's also in the uh, training slides from this year's annual partner training, and it is also in the partner guide. So I'm going to pull up the partner guide and add the LPP flow data survey. So it takes me to my browser and it gives me two prompts. I can either open this survey in the browser, which is what you would do if you were um, filling out the web form after the fact, after you've returned from the field, or I can open in the survey one, two, three field app. And that's what I'm going to choose to do now because um, that's what you wanna do when you're in the field. Um, in the browser, you can't necessarily send information if you're offline, whereas the app will allow you to do so. And we'll go over that later. Okay, so it's brought me directly to the LPP flow data survey, as you can see. But first, I just wanna take you through the app so you know how to access this survey once um, you already have it downloaded. So once you have it downloaded, which you should do before you go out into the field for the first time, you um, access it by opening survey one, two, three. Click again, continue without signing in, and it will be here under my survey one, two, three, um, titled LPP flow data. And you can see the La Rosa partnership program logo with the little blue circle. That's the one you're looking for. So when you click on that, it gives you a, a general menu with a couple options and just a short summary of why we collect flow observations in LPP. And when you're out at, at your sites, you're going to want to click collect. That brings you to the survey. So first of all, there's a little note at the top. It says, please fill out and submit one flow data survey per site for every sampling event. And um, as you have eight uh, regularly scheduled events and two high flow events, there should be a total of 10 observations uh, per site for the entire sampling season. Um, and that means that even if you don't sample a site for any reason, for instance, maybe it's dry, there's no flow, um, maybe it's flooding and the conditions aren't safe uh, for sampling, we still want you to send in flow observations because that will really uh, be valuable to us as we're reviewing data at the end of the year. Um, and also please only send in one flow observation survey per site, even if you have a field duplicate. So if you have a field duplicate, you will have two uh, lab sample ID numbers 
for one site, but we do not need flow observations for both of those lab sample ID numbers. We just need one per site, if that makes sense. So don't send in flow observations with your duplicate samples. Okay, and if you're looking for a refresher on our flow observation procedures, for instance, uh, maybe you don't remember the difference between flow level and flow type, you can click here on this little blue link and it will send you to a document um, telling you all about our flow observation procedures. So first it asks, did you sample this site? Um, I'm going to say yes in this example. And you can see um, next to this question, there's a little red star, and that means that the question is required. It means that you cannot submit this survey without answering that question. And there are lots of um, required questions in this survey to make sure that we're getting all the information we need. So next is partner, and this is your organization, and all La Rosa partners for the 2022 sampling season are included in this dropdown, as you can see. So you would pick your uh, specific organization. For this example, I'm going to choose like Maury. And the next question is site. So this is wherever you're currently sampling. Uh, and remember, we need one survey per site. So in this site drop-down menu, um, all the sites for Lake Maury will pre-populate. This is because the site question um, filters based on whatever I choose for partner. So um, if I choose Lake Maury, only sites associated with Lake Maury will show up here. And you can see if I um, change this to Lake Parker, only sites for Lake Parker will show up in this drop-down menu. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a site. Um, next, I have to write my first and last name, which is just important. Um, so we can contact anyone if there's any issues. Um, and then you can see date and time. Date and time pre-populates automatically based on when you open the survey. So um, it's great because when you're in the field, you don't have to worry about that. Next is lab sample ID, and this is also required. This is the 10 digit number you find on your bottle labels. And um, all of them are going to be 22, five digits, dash three digits. Um, and this is because we're taking all of these samples in the year 2022. So this little input here um, has filters on it. So you can only input numbers. You cannot type in letters. If I try, it won't let me. And you can also see that if I only type in four numbers, it tells me the input format is not satisfied. So it's going to make sure that I type in exactly 10 numbers. There we go, the input is satisfied. So it's all set. And next we have our flow observations. So these are the most important part. Um, flow level, let's say it was low. Flow type, base, and no visible turbidity. So um, I'm not actually out in the field right now, but next you would be capturing your upstream and downstream photos. So first you would face upstream, take a photo, and then face downstream and take a photo. Um, these aren't required, but we would prefer that you do them just so um, if there's any issues with flow observation data, like for instance, maybe there's a really high phosphorus result, um, but the flow observations say low base flow, um, and that would be very interesting. So we would, might want to look back at the photos of the stream to corroborate your observations just so we can understand, oh, maybe there really was something else going on. Um, and it wasn't a high flow, and so something else caused that high phosphorus value, okay? So um, yeah, that's why we would uh, prefer that you take photos when you're out in the field. And very last, there's notes, which is just any additional comments or relevant information you think we might wanna know that's affecting the reverse flow. Um, for instance, another example I'd use is, you know, maybe there is a new beaver dam in the area. And that's really affecting the flow. That's something we might want to know. So yeah, type that observation. And then um, once you're finished, you see this little blue bar at the bottom and the white check mark. That is how you submit. Click on that and it will prompt you saying survey completed. And the great thing about survey one, two, three is for those who are in the field, it does know whether or not your device is online. So it says, my device is online and it's prompting me to send now. 
But if your device is offline, it will prompt you to save in the outbox, which as you can see is the third option down here. So just to go over um, how we would save in, in the outbox and then send things later, I'm going to save this in the outbox. And then you see once you open <clears throat> survey one, two, three again, it lets you know that there's something stuck in your outbox in, in multiple ways. So um, first, when you're looking at my survey one, two, three, you can see um, in the top right corner of LPP flow data's icon, there's a little green one. That means that there's one submission stuck in my outbox. So it's alerting me that um, I need to do something about that once I'm back in, in service. So click here. And on this page, it lets you know as well. So um, there's a, now an outbox option with a number one next to it. That means there's one submission stuck in my outbox. And this uh, option does not show up if nothing is stuck in my outbox. You saw previously that only collect and sent were available. So um, you wanna make sure to always send things that are in your outbox so we have all of your flow observations. So um, how you send that is by clicking on outbox. And all of your observations will show up here. You can see specifically which site they're for and which sample ID they're for. Um, and rather than going in and sending them, if you have five um, observations stuck in your outbox, you can send them all at once by clicking send in the bottom right corner here. And look, the outbox option is gone. That means there's nothing stuck in my outbox. And you can even see um, the little sent option increased from two to three, which means that my submission sent. So um, let's quickly go over if you're out in the field, you submit your survey, and then you suddenly think, um, oh no, uh, I, I made a mistake. The sample ID was incorrect. You can go back and edit your submissions if you're sure that you've made an error. So you can do that by clicking on sent, and you see all of the uh, submissions that I've sent are listed here. And um, I'm going to edit that by clicking on the one that I just submitted. And it gives me the information and I can either view or edit and resend. I'm going to click edit and resend. And it just opens up the same exact survey. You can edit any of your inputs if you've made an error. Um, and I'm going to edit the sample ID. So maybe it was a dash 003 instead of a dash 001. Okay, I've corrected my error. And now I'm going to resubmit the survey by clicking the white check mark and send now. 